Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com, and welcome to the update for Tuesday, September 17th, 2019. Got a free pick coming up, our NFL report, our weekly report also coming up on this video. We'll get to all that in just a second. First quick note, if you're not yet a member at DocSports.com, just want to give it a trial run, there's a real cool way to do it. You click on the link below this video and you get yourself set up for a free $60 account. You can then use those free 60 bucks on any of my daily packages or any other capper on the roster over at DocSports.com. Again, it's a real cool way to give DocSports.com a trial run. Click on the link below the video and get set up for the free $60 account and the DocSports.com guarantee applies even to the free $60 account. Don't miss out. Great time to do it. All right, again, a free pick coming up for Tuesday in just a moment. We uh, cashed our loan premium play last night. It was in Major League Baseball. We're actually 60% winning tickets in the month of September in Major League Baseball. I have baseball going on Tuesday. It'll be available at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. WNBA was off yesterday. It returns playoff action on Tuesday. The best of five series uh, kick into gear on Tuesday and we've got a five-star play going on Tuesday's card in the WNBA. We'll go into Tuesday on runs of 16 and 6 short term, 42, 21 and 2 long term in the WNBA. It's been a great three months or so in my first season of jumping into handicapping the WNBA. Heard about it for years. Guys telling me, man, you got to give it a shot and, uh, and handicap this sport, this league. It is beatable and we've proven that, proven them to be right by going 42, 20 21 and 2 uh, with our last, what, 65 picks in the WNBA. So let's keep it going on Tuesday. Five star pick will be available Tuesday. DocSports.com, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. My baseball, again, 60% winning tickets in September. Tuesday's baseball available, 11.30 a.m. Eastern over at DocSports.com. All right, uh, as we'll get to our free pick, by the way, for Tuesday in just a minute. Uh, and I wanted to mention something that's been kind of circulating out there. The old West Coast NFL team in the Eastern time zone automatic go against blah 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 all the myths all the false information and uh, myself and a, and a handicapping friend of mine uh, used his database to go all the way back to 1980 and we've been trying to get people to look beyond the fact that this is not true. It's not true. It's a myth. This West Coast automatically losing on the East Coast of the NFL is one of the biggest myths I've ever seen in the world of sports betting and handicapping because it's been going on for so long. There was a time from like 2002 to 2008 when it was true. Uh, the East Coast teams were like 62 and 36 or something crazy like that. I don't have the exact number on that one, but the East Coast teams were the way to go for about a six season period period 2002 through 2008 but I don't think it had anything to do with West Coast traveling to East Coast what it had to do with is the Raiders the Niners teams like that were going 5 and 11 6 and 10 3 and 13 4 and 12 just about every year so I think it had more to do with the fact that they were bad football teams but anyway let's clear the myth just going to say this right now from 1980 through this past week in 2019 Actually, West Coast teams are 53% winners when playing in the Eastern time zone. You should even use it for your handicapping. That's the bottom line because here's the numbers. West Coast, 313, 276, and 13 pushes. 313 wins, 276 losses, and 13 pushes against the spread. It's about a 53% winning mark for 38, 39 years now by West Coast teams. In other words, you don't even need to bother with it when it comes to your handicapping. And I wanted to throw this out there because I see these TV shows popping up nowadays, podcasts, and they just automatically assume uh, that this is a correct stat when they say, oh, gotta watch out, West Coast team on the Eastern time zone. Eastern time zone, gotta look for them to win this one. West Coast teams can't play at 1 p.m. Eastern or whatever the time may be, and it's an absolute myth. And there's the numbers, 313, 276, and 13 West Coast teams covering at a 53% clip going all the way back to 1980. I just hope that helps you with your handicapping. I don't even care if the West Coast team is on the East Coast. It just doesn't matter to me whether it's the East Coast team I'm looking at or the West Coast team I'm looking at. All right, let's get to the recap after having said that for NFL week number two. We're here every Tuesday throughout the NFL season doing this. We will take some notes that we feel are good information for moving forward uh, against the spread and straight up. Chargers lost to the Lions 13 to 10. Listen, the Chargers had two touchdowns called back on penalties in one drive and then they got down by the 
the goal line and Austin Eckler fumbled at the goal line. So no touchdown, no score, no even field goal uh, for the Chargers as the fumble was recovered by the Detroit defense. And Chargers place kicker Ty Long missed a couple of field goals. Here's something to take from this. Besides the fact that the Chargers blew it, Detroit gave up 137 yards on 25 carries. We've talked about this last season. When Detroit goes up against a team that's good on the ground, you might want to look to play against Detroit or just stay away from the game uh, because they have had such a rough time defending the run. Uh, the Colts beat the Titans 19-17. Interesting stat on this one. Now, Jordan Wilkins, running back for the Colts going into this game, into week two, had gained a grand total of 18 yards rushing in his previous six NFL games combined. Then he busts a 55-yard run to break Tennessee backers' hearts like he did mine. 55-yard run in the final couple of minutes of the game, trailing by four points, takes it inside the Titans' five-yard line, and the, the uh, Colts go on to score the game-winning touchdown. But again, I had to point that out. Jordan Wilkins, 18 yards in six games, and then he has a 55-yard touchdown run in the closing minutes, which sets up the game-winning touchdown. I did like the fact that Frank Reich went for it with about two and a half minutes to go. Liked it in the fact that I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, it gives them a better chance to win. Pro Football Focus did a great job studying the fact whether you should punt there or go for it with two minutes left. I didn't like it as a Titans backer because they did convert that fourth down to the Colts, and that was the game winner. Jaguars lose to the Texans 13-12. The Jags get the cover. Uh, Doug Maroney decided to go for two and the win with about 30 seconds left rather than tie the game or send it to overtime. And again, PFF shows that either way, kicking the extra point there and going to overtime or going for two, you have about an equal chance of winning the football game in that situation. But uh, listen, I like Garden Minshew. I like the way this kid steps up in the pocket, the Jacksonville quarterback who took over for the injured Nick Foles in week one. He steps up in the pocket. He knows what he's got to know as he moves into the NFL, of course, from Washington State University. And what he does when he steps up in the pocket is he's got an already veteran-like way of manipulating coverage. He's going to be a good one, I think, Garden Minshew for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, the Bills beat the Giants 28-14. to We saw that Giants offense receiving core, tons of injuries. Uh, the Giants did run for 6.5 yards per carry and about 129 yards. And, of course, Saquon Barkley just keep feeding this guy the football, both running it, throw to him out of the backfield, let him get some yards after catch. Uh, Josh Allen was okay, not great, but decent enough to get the win. 19 of 30, 253 yards, one touchdown, no interception. Eli with the tough day, 26 for 45, a touchdown and two picks. I don't don't care if it's Eli or they bring in the new rookie. The bottom line is they're beat up. They're banged up. Their receiving core is banged up. Offensive line so-so when it comes to pass blocking. I don't think it makes a huge difference. But, you know, at this point of his career, you might want to bring in the rookie after maybe another week and because uh, the Giants are going nowhere anyway. Might as well get him ready for the NFL game. 49ers knock off since he 41-17. to The Niners, 30-plus points in their first two games uh, for the first time since 1998. And how about that ground game that we saw? Matt Breida, 121 yards rushing. Mostert, 83 yards rushing on 13 carries. As a team, San Francisco gained almost 260 yards on six yards per carry. Jimmy G, 17 for 25, 297. Three touchdowns, one pick. Andy Dalton uh, wasn't bad, but he was outgunned. And since he really never had a chance to establish the ground game in that contest, if, if San Francisco is going to go up against a bad rushing team, it's going to set this team up well to win football games or to have the chance to. We know about the 49ers, excuse me, about the Patriots crushing the Dolphins 43 to nothing. Uh, Brady's first three completions went to Antonio Brown as they look to work A.B. into the mix. They've outscored their first two opponents, what, 76 to three or something like that. Brady, 44 for 64, almost 70 percent, nine and a half yards per pass, five touchdowns, no picks. Sony Michelle ran well on the ground. Tell you what right now that uh, you don't really factor in the equation with the Miami Dolphins, no matter who they're playing, they are just not next level bad. Baltimore beats the Cardinals 23-17. to They did not get the cover, did the Ravens. Uh, listen, I like these play calls by Greg Roman, the OC, the offensive coordinator for Baltimore. Uh, he gave Lamar Jackson a lot of fake screen calls and then to throw to the tight end. Lamar certainly did well with that. He also had that pinpoint 40-yard pass uh, late in the game to ice the game. Two touchdowns, no picks, 272 yards passing. Uh, the, the thing that scares me about Lamar Jackson, and he is getting better, he's reading defenses 
much better than he did last year uh, being well coached but he ran the ball 16 times and I counted several times of those 16 where he really shouldn't have taken off and run with the football so he's got to get that under control you don't want your quarterback running the ball that much in the NFL he will not last a full season in all likelihood as far as the Cardinals listen again Kyler Murray the rookie starts out slow as a good second half but David Johnson just seven carries 14 yards got to get him the football like they did in week one against Detroit in the second half of that game the Bears beat the Broncos 16-14 Denver scored with about 30 seconds left in the game uh, they went for two to win rather than the tie and send to overtime and they got the two-point conversion uh, but the Bears have a place kicker alert the populace Eddie Pinheiro makes that 51 yarder for the win in the closing seconds and got the victory 16-14 over Denver the Chiefs beat the Raiders 28 to 10 the Chiefs spot Oakland 10 points they scored 28 in the second quarter didn't score the other three quarters weird game uh, Patrick Mahomes 278 yards passing and all four touchdowns in the second quarter alone scary thing Casey has no ground game imagine if they get one they had one and a half yards per carry against the Raiders and after two weeks Casey has allowed 210 yards on six yards per carry just got to wonder when those kind of stats catch up to them this Baltimore KC uh, clash that's coming up this week uh, we're going to talk about it as our marquee video over at DocSports.com. that should be up by Wednesday afternoon I'm telling you what right now this defense of KC's might be just perfectly built for what Baltimore is going to want to do. We're going to talk more about that game as we get closer to the weekend. Seahawks knock off the Steelers 28-26, and we learned that Big Ben uh, not only missed the second half of yesterday's game, not only knocked out the second quarter, but he's been knocked out for the season with the elbow injury. And then we saw uh, Mason Rudolph look pretty good. He looked pretty heady. He stepped up in the pocket, just like I mentioned Garden Minshew did. He did manipulate coverage. Wasn't too bad. But uh, the bottom line is, as these first two games, besides the offensive issues Pittsburgh has, the first two games, Pittsburgh has allowed 53 of 71. That's 75% passing. 641 passing yards allowed. Six passing touchdowns allowed. They have no interceptions. Seattle also ran for 150 yards and about four and a half yards per carry. Tell you what, right now, the Pittsburgh defense better quit trying to put extra pressure on quarterbacks or they're going to get burned all season long when they leave guys open because they're bringing that blitz a little bit too often. And I just gave you the passing numbers uh, by the defense to support that claim. Cowboys beat the Redskins 31-21. Cowboy backers get the cover. Dak Prescott, 51 of 62. 82% through his first two games. 670 plus yards. 11 yards per pass. Seven touchdowns. Only one pick. Zeke had a big game on the ground. Dallas ran for 213 yards on 34 carries, more than six yards per carry. Skins had no ground game. Uh, Case Keenan played well. He had no running game, but yet he was able to uh, pass the football well. He's 70% so far, so he's accurate. And he's got five touchdowns and no picks. But the Skins defense, worse than Detroit's run defense. How about this? Washington's defense has now allowed 336 yards rushing on 5.2 yards per carry in two games. Again, when Washington matches up against a team that can run block and run the football, Ball, you're going to look to want to probably either play against them or stay away from the game. Vikings lose to the Packers 21 to 16. Some bad decisions made by Minnesota because Dalvin Cook was tearing it up. They kind of went away from him a little bit. That cost them. Kirk Cousins, wow. Good thing for him he signed that contract because he has not been good so far. How do you get a running game like Kirk Cousins has with the Minnesota Vikings and then go out there and go 14 for 32, a touchdown and two picks? He's not been good. The Packers defense, by the way, has held their opponents to 40 of 77 passing. That's 52%. One touchdown. They picked off three passes. It did come against Trubisky and Cousins. Uh, so we'll see if uh, their incredible defensive numbers against the pass continue as the schedule as far as the opposing quarterbacks get tougher for Green Bay. Rams knocked off the Saints 27-9. You know what happened there. Drew Brees with a thumb injury early in the game. Uh, we also know that the Saints were ripped off again. They had the defensive touchdown after a Rams fumble, returned it all the way. Would have built a 10-3 lead. Instead, the play's called dead, so you can't review it. That was that. The Rams went on to the win, and the Saints with Teddy Bridgewater not able to get the job done offensively. They get beat by 18. Uh, Goff better this week than he has been in his last two games, which include Week 1 against Carolina and the Super Bowl. But again, nothing spectacular as far as the Monday night football game that we just watched oh forget about it I mean it's a situation where I'm glad I didn't make the premium play on it we did unfortunately lose uh, the over that we gave out as the free pick and uh, again you had another quarterback going down so yeah the Jets 
going with their third string quarterback, couldn't muster any offense. Uh, Cleveland had their chances. They were moving up and down the field between the 30s for the most part. So I don't know, man, if you get your second string quarterback at least and Trevor Simeon, who's been around for a while, maybe you approach that total. But uh, with your third string quarterback out there for one of the teams, it just was not going to happen. All right, that's everything for this week to recap. We're here every Tuesday with our NFL recap from the previous weekend and hope we give you some stats that can kind of help you out with your upcoming week and, and, and beyond the week uh, throughout the next few weeks of handicapping. Again, we do Mondays. We do opening line report in college football every single Monday, Tuesday's NFL report, and that's every single Tuesday throughout the course of the NFL season. Don't forget, I've got a baseball premium play, and I'm going to get to the free pick in a moment, but I've got the baseball premium play available at 1130 a.m. Eastern at DocSports.com. 60% winning tickets in the month of September in baseball. And then WNBA told you about those great runs. We've got a five-star play which will be posted on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, again on my homepage over at DocSports.com. Let's get to the free pick, all right, for Tuesday, and that is a Major League Baseball matchup. It's Tampa Bay at the Dodgers. Listen, uh, it'll be Snell against Stripling. Looks like Blake Snell is going to have three innings tops. Stripling hasn't been eating up many innings, three innings, four innings, two innings in his outings. And here's the thing about Tampa Bay, or excuse me, about the Dodgers. As good as that record is, they've been kind of um, putting it in cruise control for the past month. They're 16 and 13 uh, as far as their wins and losses are concerned in their last 29 games. So they're not winning anywhere close to the rate they were uh, before about a month ago. Again, they've been well out in front. They've been putting it on kind of a cruise control. When you look at Tampa Bay, as far as they are concerned, being a short dog as I cut this video, 13-4 and four in the last 17, 23-8 and eight last 31 against right-handers. And right now, man, Austin Meadows for Tampa Bay, he's just seeing that baseball like it's a beach ball, and he's having a great month for the Tampa Bay Rays. We're going to back the Rays. We think both starting pitchers are going to, uh, well, we know Snell's only going to get at the most three innings, it looks like. That's what they're reporting. I doubt Stripling gets too many innings here and I think the Rays bullpen will be better equipped uh, LA coming home from the East Coast I like the uh, Tampa Bay Rays to get the victory here so our free pick for Tuesday's baseball card is the Tampa Bay Rays hey listen I hope you like these videos if you do click on that thumbs up button be sure to subscribe I'm Scott Sprites at DocSports.com let's put Tuesday in the win column right back here Wednesday 5 a.m. Eastern 2 a.m. Pacific